All right, so here is part two of my quadcopter build. My last video, I showed you all the parts I had. Uh, most of the stuff I got from Hobby King, a few things I got from eBay, and this is what everything looks like all built and put together. I've flown it a few times and it flies pretty good. I'm pretty happy with it. I could tune the, um, the PI settings a little bit, but for the most part, uh, it flies pretty good. I have flashed the, uh, the beginner firmware on there and um, does, just the stock settings with that for the KK2.1 uh, seem to work pretty good. Um, let's see, I've also flashed Simon K firmware onto these ESCs and that definitely made a difference. Actually, I only flew it one time before I flashed the firmware so I can't really tell you exactly what kind of difference it made. Um, I did notice um, that the motors start up a lot smoother and all at the same time uh, with Simon K versus without it, so I highly recommend that. And um, so let's just go around here and take a look at everything. Uh, so the motors seem pretty good. Uh, they definitely have a lot of power. Uh, they probably have more power than I would ever need. Uh, if I do put a camera on this thing, it'll probably be a Mobius, which hardly weighs anything anyway, so I'm not going to be lifting anything heavy. So these motors would be just fine. Uh, these props, they do glow in the dark, but um, they I, I would only say maybe two or three minutes of reliable glow that you're going to get out of this if you try to fly this thing at night. So overall not really a reliable nighttime you know flying source of light um, i was thinking about putting some uv leds under here just to kind of light these up a little bit i don't even know if that would work or not but i'll give it a try so taking a look at a few other things here i have a i have a little voltmeter right here that i can see from about 10 feet away when i'm flying and it lights up red so you know just something a little extra for um, you know on top of the voltage reading that the KK 2.1 gives you the voltage difference displayed on here versus this is about a tenth of a volt so this one is actually more accurate than this one uh, for example if this thing is reading 12 volts this will read 12.1 volts Taking a look at the FR Sky Receiver, this is how I have the antenna set up. So a lot of people say that you should mount the antennas. This one has two antennas. They should be 90 degrees from each other, and that's how I mounted these here. And all I did was take some zip ties and just kind of stuck them in there and got a little bit of a shrink tubing, put it over the zip ties, and then ran the antennas right through that to create that 90 degree angle. As far as the battery goes, I haven't really tested the full flight time, but I know I'm getting at least, uh, I don't know, I wanna say at least 12 minutes easily uh, with that, but I'll have to do a, a better test uh, just by hovering. This is how I have the wires set up right here. I try to make everything as clean as possible. Everything goes down under here. And then it uh, just kind of comes right out and plugs into the FR Sky receiver. And right up here, this is the KK 2.1 board. So the the 2.1.5 actually has uh, a slightly different header pin up here for the voltage reading. This one is for the piezo buzzer, which I have right here. And that's this one. And then this connector right here is for the voltage reading. You have to plug this in in order for the uh, the KK board to know what the battery voltage is. Okay, so if you just plug the buzzer in without this, the buzzer is just going to keep on beeping. Um, so you don't want that. So all I did here was take one of these server connectors, which are normally three wires, took out the yellow wire, trimmed off some of that black plastic on the connector and then I just plugged it in plugged it in like that okay and then I ran it underneath and soldered it to one of the 
the connectors for the the ESC where they're uh, soldered onto the onto the board. Uh, what else here? Standard mounting procedure, pretty much for the KK board. I just took the the foam lid that comes with the KK board and just kind of double sided tape that onto the frame, and then put some more double sided tape um, to the bottom of the board, and that seems to hold that down pretty good. Alright, this is how I have all the connections on here. The ESCs, the wires on here were just a tad too long, so I went ahead and cut off about, I don't know, almost two inches um, from, from these three wires here and, um, you know, soldered on those female bullet connectors onto the ESC and then connected those to the male bullet connectors which came with these motors. And that's how I have that there. Okay. So this is just a little overview. If you want to see, uh, you know, if you're if you're interested in getting into multi-copters and you're trying to figure out how everything is going to be situated, you want to plan out your build. Um, this video may be some use for you. I'll go ahead and put in the links in the description for pretty much all the parts that I use for this build. All the links to Hobby King and and maybe even the, the few parts that I got from eBay, which uh, really wasn't much anyway. As far as this transmitter goes, the 9XR, it works pretty good. The only problem that I have with this is that this stick right here is just a tad bit loose but there is a fix for that somebody on RC groups posted a fix uh, basically there's a little piece inside that is a little loose and you have to like you know unscrew this the back of it and stick a little piece of like plastic or something in there and and then it'll work a little better for you okay and there's the uh, DJT module on the back. And I'm not really using any of these switches except for this one, which I have used to turn the light on the screen on and off. And this one's pretty standard. This is the gear switch. Um, which is connected to the auxiliary port on here and that is used to activate or deactivate self-level mode for the KK2 board. Uh, you don't have to put it on the gear switch, you could put it on wherever you want. That's how I did it, that's pretty standard. So that's pretty much it guys, let me know if you have any questions about this build. Um, hopefully this video has been useful for you. And um, if you're looking to get into quadcopters or hex or octocopters, um, good luck. <laughs> uh, there's a lot of information out there. So go ahead and learn as much as you can before you start building and buying all these parts. Uh, the last thing you want to do is get too deep in over your head and realize that you kind of screwed up. So, all right, guys, until the next one.